Thank you. It is so good to be with all of you this weekend. Um, I stumbled across the covenant three years ago uh, with the same um, way that many people find their dates nowadays, which is on live. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I stumbled across it because uh, this wonderful church, um, church search website allowed you to type in keywords. So I felt called to multicultural um, youth ministry, specifically with Latinos, and I found Stockton Covenant Church because that was uh, their key vision. And I came on staff three years ago to be a part of that. And our church is doing um, a lot of different things to press into that calling uh, we're doing joint worship services and activities with a predominantly African-American church and a Latino church in Stockton. And another thing that happened this fall that um, I felt God calling us to do was to organize a multicultural fall camp for our high school students. And there's some photos of the camp that will be going through the screen, um, so you can check that out. Uh, so fall camp happened this past November, and um, before fall camp, I really didn't have any connections with any Latino um, youth pastors in our community. Um, uh, the city that I serve in, Stockton, is 46% uh, Latino, so that's one of the reasons that we're specifically focusing on uh, partnering with the Latino community. So I contacted our conference, offer it, our conference office um, and got connected with a woman named Juana Nesta. Juana Nesta is a full-time teacher. Um, she's a volunteer at their Covenant Church's uh, youth ministry, which is a Latino church. Um, she also works with a lot of the um, Latino church leaders um, in their youth program in the churches in Northern California. Um, so Juana and I started talking and I basically pitched an idea to Juana. I asked, hey, I would love to do a fall camp with you guys in several of the Latino churches. Would you guys be interested? And she was so excited. Many of the Latino churches uh, don't have the ability to send students or plan a fall camp, whether it be because they have uh, volunteers that are running their youth ministry or financial barriers. So they were all for it. And I was super pumped, um, so Juan and I planned this together. Um, there were definitely barriers in planning this fall camp. Pursuing multicultural ministry is not easy. Um, it takes effort, like most good things. It took time to contact churches, to find a speaker and worship band that could be relevant to both of the cultures of our churches. Uh, even when we got to camp and we got all our students together, they still hung out with their same friends in the same churches. Um, it also um, was hard because there were a lot of churches that we invited that couldn't come. It was just not, they were already doing things or um, they had different, uh, different barriers that, um, that prevented them from coming. But despite all of these barriers, I believe that what happened at our fall camp and what will continue to happen as we pursue multicultural youth ministry is worth the effort. My students gained a more holistic view of who God is and his kingdom when they were led by and had fellowship with their brothers and sisters of other cultures. Characteristics of who God is and what it means to follow him are better displayed in different cultures. At fall camp, my students experience celebration and fiesta and freedom in Christ and hospitality that are so beautifully displayed in the Latino culture. We had bilingual worship and Marco Embrice from First Covenant Oakland was our speaker who, sp who spoke in English but threw in some Spanish. Um, and through worshiping in another language, even though they may not have understood it, my students gained a deeper awareness that the God we serve is the God of all nations. My students experienced that there is no longer Greek nor Gentile in Christ. Teaching them about unity is not enough. If I want my students to understand the unity we have in Christ, I must give them opportunities to experience it. My students, who are part of different cultural backgrounds, were exposed to leaders following Jesus who look like them. They saw that being a pastor or being a worship leader is not only things that we white people do. All, all of my church staff are Anglos currently. Uh, one of my Mexican students recently told me that he wants to be a Christian speaker. 
I'm not sure if he would have thought to do that if he wouldn't have been at our fall camp and seeing people like him doing just that. Um, North Park provost Michael Emerson, in his book Divided by Faith, argues that despite teaching against racism, segregated churches actually contribute to the racism that exists. When we do things together, we attack the racism that still exists in our country. Scripture clearly calls us to be agents of justice. Through games and activities, students were able to get connected um, with people from different cultural backgrounds. All this, though this was difficult at first, at the end of camp, students of different churches gathered together around the campfire voluntarily to hang out and share stories. I believe even in these relationships that were built over just one weekend, they can play a part of attacking the racism in our country. My students experience the power of the gospel in a new way. Jesus said that they will know you are my disciples because of your love for one another. If we love our brother, what does that show? Even the pagans do that. True love is displayed when we love people who are different than us, people that are hard for us to love. Through the multicultural retreat, my students saw a love that goes beyond cultural and ethnic barriers. Especially in a time in our country where there is much division, I think pursuing unity in Christ is one of the most powerful ways that our students, that my students, can experience and display God's love. And this is only the beginning. I feel like I'm just starting in this journey. Um, there are new relationships to be formed, relationships to be deepened, more frequent gatherings that uh, we hope to have. There's need for teaching students on how to deal with tension that will arise if we continue to pursue multicultural youth ministry. Some of you have been on this journey longer than I have. I would love to talk to you about it more. Those of you who are starting new or interested, or those of you who have been doing this for a long time. I would love to hear about your experiences, your ideas, your questions, your difficulties. Will you join me? Will you join me in this messy, difficult journey of discipling students in a multicultural setting? This messy ministry of not only teaching, but allowing our students to experience God in new ways. God as the Lord of all nations and the power and love of Christ that truly breaks all barriers.